first of all, as the name describes, it is not something that is actually real, despite what people want to believe about the supposed success of Asian Americans as a racial group. Um, it's also a term that was coined in the 1960s by a white journalist. So it's also not something that's coming from within the community, unlike the phrase Asian American, which actually was a label that was created by Asian American activists and organizers in the late 60s and early 70s as a way to get away from the term Oriental. Um, and if there's anyone out there who's still using the term Oriental to refer to people of Asian descent, please stop. So the first thing is that this isn't true, right? Asian Americans are not succeeding because there is something inherent to us or our culture, despite what people like Amy Chua might think. The second thing is it's not true that Asian Americans are this, you know, undisputed success story. So when you start to drill down into Asian ethnic groups and you look at the rates of Southeast Asian communities, like specifically Hmong and Laotian and Burmese, they have among the lowest graduation rates from high school, among the lowest socioeconomic status, among the lowest college attendance. The model minority myth is hard to explain. It's the idea that Asian immigrants and their American born children are smart, talented, hardworking, good at math and science. When you complain, people want to say, how thin skinned could you be? Why are you politically correct? They're trying to pay you a compliment. Yet it's false flattery. It allows the whitewashing of the very real problems. It allows people to say, what are you complaining about? You're doing better here than you would in your homeland. Of course, not realizing that America is our homeland. It's a way to say that Asian Americans don't need any help and shouldn't be shown any solicitude. It also ratchets up racial resentment. The idea that you're hardworking and an overachiever suggests maybe a little too hardworking. You're an overachiever, you're getting more than your fair share. Why are the Asians taking over? They have all the seats at the prestigious institution, all the scholarships, they win every spelling bee and science fair and math competition. It's all these people named Kim and Yuen and Patel. Where are the real Americans? What the model minority myth does, what the journalist, when he first used it, meant to do was praise Japanese Americans in the 1960s and to say, like, look at these good, hardworking, quiet, passive people who come to the United States and they don't cause any trouble. And the subtext of that was, unlike the way that Black Americans are currently causing trouble for the United States. It's another way, not even very subtle, of saying to African Americans and other people of color, look, the Asians, they made it. Why can't you? Okay, so clearly we can see it's damaging because it is somehow creating a binary between Asians as a good minority who are able to succeed and then every other racial minority group, Latinx people, indigenous people, and of course, black Americans. And I certainly think there are people, not just white Americans, but we can look at Candace Owens, for example, who is using this model minority rhetoric to somehow create divisions between Asian Americans and Black Americans or other racial minorities. Now, there are plenty of Asian Americans who don't believe this and have never bought into this. There have always been individual Asian Americans who have worked in solidarity for social justice. The poster behind me is of Grace Lee Boggs, who was a notable Detroit activist who spent her lifetime really advocating for the rights of poor people everywhere, as well as disenfranchised people everywhere, but especially in her local community of Detroit. Um, and then the other thing is that there have always been Asian Americans who are actively trying to resist the stereotype, who, who resisted the stereotype before the stereotype even existed. People like Yuri Kochiyama, um, Japanese American activist, very famously, there's a photo of her cradling the head of Malcolm X when he was assassinated in New York City. And then, you know, in our present day, there are so many Asian American leaders who are fighting on behalf of social justice and especially against anti-black racism. So I think we need to we need to say this not to discount the racism that exists in Asian American communities because there is anti-black racism that exists within Asian American communities, but we need to say this to show that the narrative is always much more complicated than people want to believe. For Asian Americans 
there's been the perennial bewilderment in black-white tensions with this color line. If we're neither black nor white, where do we fit in? How can we help? How have we expressed prejudice or enjoyed privilege? How is it possible to be an ally and yet acknowledge that Asian Americans have had their own set of unique challenges? There is no right answer, but it's so important to ask these questions. I guess what I would say is that I hope, first of all, that if there's anyone out there who is Asian American identified, who somehow thinks that this is a compliment, please be aware that it's not a compliment. People saying that you are a model minority um, is actually inaccurate, it's very damaging, and it's definitely divisive. I'm always encouraging Asian Americans to stand up and speak out by bridge building in coalition with others who share their ideals. You know, many uh, East Asian cultures have uh, an attitude. The, the best known version is the Japanese proverb. The nail that sticks up is pounded down, right? right? It's the idea, uh, don't go looking for trouble. Compare that to the American adage, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So for many who have come from backgrounds where there wasn't civil society, there hasn't been civic engagement, they don't have that tradition. But here in America, it's necessary. We have to come together. And to say we're American is to signal that, not just to others, but to ourselves, to say this now is our home.